There's something psychological about seeing seeing how close the excavator is over there to the top of the damn wall. It sort of gives you a little light at the end of the tunnel. So it's uh, the 15th of October as we're standing here on the right abutment. Um, we're actually standing on what we call Road 41, which is the entry road leading into the gallery at the downstream downstream base of the dam wall. So I've got Matt Richardson with us today. He's uh, one of our key construction managers. Matt, what can we expect to see in the gallery when we walk in today? Yeah, thanks Ray. Look, um, Jim Vert, who our main drill and grout contractor, have commenced work. Um, the operations right at the moment that are going on is a, a core drilling operation, which is where they'll core down about 50 metres below the dam, extract that core for the geologist to have a look at and assess for faults, etc., below the dam. And then another operation where they're preparing to do a grout injection. Um, the grout injection will happen every six metres below the dam ray. And this is the purpose of that is to seal up any cracks and fissures that might be a water path below the dam. Um, as you can imagine, with 80 metres of head of water on one side of the dam, there's a lot of pressure that's going to try and push water below the dam. This grout curtain will seal up any faults below the dam. So all the water that we actually use through the, the grouting operations is recycled and put back into the, into the operation. So we don't expect to uh, lose much water at all, Ray, probably maybe 10, 20% as we flush the system once in a while. Yeah, sounds great. Let's have a look. isolation valve as part of the stage 3 diversion and this is one of the valves in the system. It takes one hour to open the valve by hand. It's uh, an estimate of three and a half thousand revolutions. Uh, the valve isn't commissioned through power yet, that's why we're doing it manually. Down inside the heart of the dam at the moment, uh, to the right of me here, uh, behind this concrete wall, about six metres behind, is the, uh, the water that the dam is containing. In front of me here, or behind me here, is a team of uh, specialists uh, from Geovert, and they're currently just about to uh, put a packer down inside one of the cord holes, pump water in behind there, and pressure test the hole just to see whether it right below is, uh, is water tight. Um, irrespective of what they find, they will still pump grout down inside that hole, try and get it into any fissure or seam that already faults in the rock below. Uh, but the pressure test will let us know just how much grout it will take. Right, good day, Hugh. Um, so how's the coring going today? Oh, it's not going too badly. We're uh, down at uh, 1.8 metres so far. Okay. And so uh, we're still on the RCC concrete. Um, and uh, we're still going to be down and drilling into the concrete for a few more metres yet. Okay. Uh, probably down to about, uh, uh, I think it's about 13 metres uh, before, we, before we reach the uh, rhyolite rock. Yep. Um, and then once, we, once we've reached that rock, we then pour down into it uh, around about 42 metres. Before we, before we stop. This is what we call the Maxwell Smart Door. It's basically the door that seals off the intake tower in the event of an earthquake. Uh, any of the pipe within the intake tower uh, may rupture. And this door here is basically what stands between the dam wall and a gusher downstream. So effectively this door is designed to Seal the reservoir. That's right. It's a it's a bulkhead door. So you might, you might have heard about it in submarines. A very thick, very heavy door. It'll seal up against here. So there's a valve on the end of this little inlet here. So the idea is, if the door's sealed and we've got the water up all the way through the tower, exercising this valve will be the only way of actually releasing the water out of the tower. And essentially, where this water runs runs to is back through the gallery where we just were, and where the drilling is occurring, and then hopefully out the exit and back into the Cotter River. 
this would be a, an extreme case. So uh, we're not expecting to have to do this anytime soon. Okay, we're deep inside the intake chamber at the moment. Um, this is the uh, second bottom intake point. Uh, what this is is a, is a pipe that goes through the wall of the intake chamber uh, and it will connect through to the reservoir on the far side. Uh, the water supply and environmental flows will come through these, uh, this pipe or the one of the other seven that come through the intake chamber. A couple below, another five above us. Um, there's a valve here so we can turn it on and off and the water will then connect to a 1500 uh, steel pipe that then goes down underneath the dam and through either to the environmental flows discharging into Kota River or right through to the uh, Murrumbidgee or the Kota pumping station where it can be pumped up to Mount Stromlo and fed through to the city of Canberra. So we're currently uh, standing on the downstream face just above the new structure that's being built on which is called the aeration step. So in behind us uh, we're doing some setup and prep work for the formwork and so forth to start. Uh, the aeration step itself forms part of the primary spillway on the new Cotter Dam. Uh, and in essence what the aeration step is, is it's a profile that we build on the downstream face that allows the water to be directed away from the face and also whilst directing the water away from the face we induce air into it and that, that induction of air into the, into the flow uh, creates a less dense material. It's a relatively simple process up here but the biggest problem is on this area is its access. It's 40 metres from the base of the uh, dam. It's a very decent hike up here via scaffold stairs and everything needs to be craned in. So every little bit of material, concrete, reinforcement needs to be craned in. So very, very dependent on our two main tower cranes, TC1 and TC2. Okay, so we're standing at the moment on the upstream side of the dam wall. Um, the reason we're here is just to show you um, what's happening in terms of the we're switching over diversion, so previously we had what we termed the stage two diversion, which was a uh, two metre diameter pipe running against the left abutment. Um, we've now sealed that with the gate, and the reason we've done that is because we have some work that needs to be done in the Stilling Basin, which is on the downstream side of the wall on that same side. So in effect, we have to remove that section of pipe. So now that we've sealed um, the river diversion on that left abutment side, we've switched over to the right side, we're actually running through um, our diversion temporarily through the permanent infrastructure within the tower, so all the pipe work that's within the tower. So really what we're doing is we're using the permanent pipe work within the intake tower in a temporary capacity to give us a diversion. The main issue for us here is that the capacity to run water through the intake tower is much less than we would have had with the original diversion. So we're going to be watching the level of uh, the water between, um, between the two dam walls just to make sure that um, we're operating the valves appropriately. Of course this does give us an opportunity as well to uh, basically water test uh, the dam wall um, and we are also running some uh, monitoring um, uh, processes within the dam wall just to make sure that uh, uh, we're keeping track of any seepage or any early indicators that we need to do any further sealing works to prevent water running through the wall. We're about five metres off the, uh, the top of the dam wall now. We expect um, the next couple of weeks for the RCC or the roller compacted concrete to cease. And then uh, what we have there, they uh, have left to do then is the structural concrete. Um, on the top of the dam wall um, and this is uh, basically curved in nature just to assist the flow uh, in a sort of a flood situation or in a spilling situation. So um, it won't be long now before we actually start thinking about having to pack up the batch plant and uh, send it back. Um, but it's good to see progress. Yeah.